The first step to installing the Cisco Nexus 1000V Virtual Supervisor Module is to ensure that the three port groups are defined to carry the control, packet, and management VLANs. If these port groups are not defined, go ahead and define them now. Since we'll be installing two VSMs, I'll demonstrate both methods for installation. The first is to use an OVF template. Select Deploy OVF Template from the File menu and browse to the location of the Cisco Nexus 1000V OVF file. Click Next and accept the End User License Agreement. Go ahead and provide the primary VSM with a name. Once at the networking configuration, ensure that the control, management, and packet VLANs are properly assigned. Remember, order is important here, and the first interface should be control, second management, and third packet. Once you've configured the network configuration, go ahead and complete the VM definition. It will take a few minutes for the OVF template to be deployed and the virtual machine to be ready. Once the OVF deployment is complete, click Close. Now go ahead and power on the VM. And once the VM is running, you can open up a console view to the VM. It will take a few minutes for the Cisco NXOS running on the Virtual Supervisor module to load. Once the NXOS is finished loading, you'll see the initial setup script. First, go ahead and enter the admin password. You'll be asked to enter it twice for verification. Once you've entered the password, you'll be asked to enter a domain ID. Go ahead and select the domain ID, and seeing as this is the first VSM, select the primary role for this VSM. Select Yes when prompted to enter basic configuration dialog. I'll skip through some of the configuration and highlight the critical components to installing the Nexus 1000V. First, enter the name of the switch. This will be the name that will be used to represent it within vCenter server. Also assign an IP address and basic IP properties such as the subnet and the default gateway. If you choose, you can disable Telnet and enable SSH services for more secure communication to the VSM. Select the S when prompted about SVS domain parameters. Now define the VLANs that you've selected for the control and packet interfaces, as well as confirm the domain ID that you selected previously. Once you've completed this step, you can save the configuration. Now that the primary VSM is up and running, let's go ahead and deploy the secondary VSM using an alternative installation method. This installation method is much more similar to deploying a traditional virtual machine by defining manually the configuration for the virtual machine, as well as using an ISO file to install the operating system. Select Custom as the configuration definition and give the virtual machine a name. Go ahead and select the appropriate storage and the virtual machine version, keeping in mind that if you select version 7, you'll be limited to ESX 4.0. During the operating system definition, select Other Linux 64-bit. Assign a single virtual processor and 2 gigabytes of memory.
Now select three virtual NICs to be associated with this virtual machine. Again, assigning the control, management, and packet port groups that were defined earlier. Also ensure that the network adapters are E1000. Go ahead and create a new virtual disk of 3 gigabytes in size. Complete the virtual machine definition. Once the virtual machine is defined, we'll need to edit a few properties on the virtual machine to make sure that it's properly configured. Go ahead and right click on the virtual machine and select Edit Settings. First, you'll want to edit the CD properties. The virtual machine will need to boot off the NXOS ISO, so browse to the ISO location. Once you've selected the ISO location, go ahead and ensure that you've selected the Connect on Power On option for the CD device. After you've edited the CD properties, you'll need to go in and set up CPU and memory reservations for the virtual machine. This step is already pre-configured for you when you deploy the OVF template, but you'll need to manually define it here. Set the CPU reservation to 1500 MHz, and then go ahead and set the memory reservation to 2 GB. Once the memory reservation is complete, the virtual machine definition is good to go. Go ahead and power on the virtual machine. While the virtual machine is powering on, go ahead and minimize the vSphere client. At this point, we're going to bring up a SSH session to the primary virtual supervisor module. Remember, you may have enabled Telnet and disabled SSH, or vice versa, so go ahead and log in in whatever method you've selected for your VSM. Once you've logged into the primary virtual supervisor module, go ahead and maximize the vSphere client window again. Open up a console session to the secondary virtual supervisor module. At this point, the virtual supervisor module installation may still be going on, and it will just take a few more minutes. Once the NXOS installation is complete, you'll be prompted again for a password for the secondary virtual supervisor module. Once you've entered and confirmed the password, go ahead and enter the same domain ID that you've selected for the primary virtual supervisor module, and select the role for this virtual supervisor module to be secondary. It's going to ask you are you sure, and then reboot the virtual supervisor module. Because this is the secondary virtual supervisor module, it will go out and automatically detect the primary and pull the configuration from the primary VSM. At this point, you can go ahead and close the console view to the secondary virtual supervisor module and bring up the SSH session to the primary virtual supervisor module. Go ahead and issue the show module command on the primary virtual supervisor module. You can see that there's only one virtual supervisor module associated with the Nexus 1000V at this point. This is because the secondary virtual supervisor module has not finished its reboot. It may take a few moments, but once the secondary virtual supervisor module has finished its reboot, you can issue the show module command again and see both the secondary and the primary virtual supervisor module.